Hey guys, Darren back again. If you're like me, you've got an OS SC 1.5 and the 1.5 has the DVI connection and the analog audio out and no HDMI, no pass through of audio. So it's a little bit annoying, but there's an easy fix. So what you do is you buy yourself a little adapter, which just pumps out HDMI and you buy the upgrade board, which we fit inside the unit and it allows audio to pass through the HDMI connect. I'm glad they've got that solution because that's a really good little upgrade. But if you've got 1.6, you don't need to worry about this. Yours is already ready. Um, and older versions, I don't know. I think there's some problems with the upgrade of those. So hopefully you've got 1.5 and you can follow along at home. So let's go through it. Right, so first thing we need to do is just power it up and see what firmware version we're running. We've got 0.78. So I think that's been superseded now. Um, but more importantly, we need to actually upgrade the firmware to support this audio mod. Uh, and the firmware ends with dash AUD. So it's a regular firmware, but the uh, maker provides an AUD version for audio. Um, so I need to go and grab that file, flash to the unit, make sure that works first, and then do the upgrade. So I'll show you those steps quite quickly. There is already a firmware upgrade video out there um, from the maker. So I'll just do it quickly. I'll show you what to do um, as a first step. Okay, so video game perfection is where you get the, the little chip from. Uh, it's really inexpensive. Um, yeah, he hasn't got many left. So be quick if you want to pick that up. Okay, first thing you need to do to do the firmware is to download the SD memory card formatting tool. Um, use this tool for all sorts of formatting of SD cards, for all sorts of optical drive emulators and so forth. It's a very good tool. Run the tool up, select your drive, just label it however you want. I like to tick these two options. Uh, it just helps the SD card format properly. Some support that option, some don't, but it won't hurt. Now, my one didn't, but it'll still format perfectly. So it just it's a good preparation, that tool, so do that. Then go to Win32 Disk Imager from SourceForge, uh, download it, and have that ready. Now, at this stage, I've highlighted all the AUD uh, firmware files. So dash AUD is the audio one we need, uh, that one. Now, if you've got a regular version, 1.6, you just get the regular version and that'll be fine. The other ones ending in like JP, that's for Japanese language. So it's not really relevant unless you want to read things in Japanese. Okay, so then launch your tool. Um, pick your drive letter up the top corner, which is E drive for me. Load your binary file. It'll write that firmware to the prepared SD card and you're good to go. Then over here to the instructions from the maker at GitHub. So what he's done is he's got a readme file here and he refers to images from the readme file to assist with the installation. So that just gives you a bit of a disclaimer about the versions. Okay, so step one is to cut the traces. And this is the image he refers to. So you just run a knife through the traces there on the top right, top left, sorry. And here's a demonstration of it done. Just a big knife cut through the middle there where the little letters are, and it'll sever those that trace between the pads. Now we just need to join the, the relevant wires. So you've got to do audio input on to the back of the SCART head. Now I'll show you that in a second. So there's the audio coming in from the SCART to the board, those three wires. And then power will be just taken, or power and crystal oscillator, will be taken um, off the off those, that regulator at the top left and be from behind the crystal. So the crystal, we actually have to run a wire through the board and then connect to that pin there. So that's the whole job. It's That's what we're going to do today. It's pretty straightforward. Um, the audio in from the SCART head and the relevant voltage and the crystal clock. Uh, I'm just showing you this quickly. This is just a... Uh, another page with some with the same installation images, so I'll have all this linked, uh, which you can refer to if you need to. 
Okay, so with the formatting stuff all done uh, and the firmware prepared, uh, we can just flash our unit. So basically, you just put it underneath here in the slot. I believe it goes that way. Just sort of, just sort of slides in. Doesn't actually have a spring-loaded micro SD card slot. So just be careful with that. Now I believe we just flick it on with power, and it should upgrade. No, actually we need the remote. So let me just grab the remote. Sorry. Okay, I'm back. So I've got the remote, which you're going to need, and it's just a universal remote. Uh, so I'd recommend you buy the remote with the unit. It, it really makes a big difference. Uh, there's a lot of features you kind of need this to access and there's now an overlay you can stick on this which explains what everything does so i'm going to get that and stick it on as well uh, i'll put a picture up of what that looks like and let's get on with it so we flick it on we're still running 0.78 and i believe we go to menu there we go firmware update boom validating data Okay, 0.8 AUD audio, yes. So one for yes. Updating firmware. Verifying flash. Okay, please restart. So we flick it off. Just give it a second. Turn it back on and it should say 0.8. Hey, 0.8 audio, beautiful. Okay, so that's our first step. So I'd recommend you flash the firmware first before you make any changes to the board, any soldering points, power it back off. Okay, so to disassemble this thing ready for installation, uh, you just back off the four top screws and the top will lift off. Um, you take off the washer and nut off the, the toggle switch. The middle layer will come out and I'm gonna take my adapter off. Now we're going to need to get to the underside of the board as well to get to the crystal. So we, we kind of have to take all of these out. So I'll just do that as well. Bottom layer will lift off with the screws intact and we can get to the bottom. So the reason we need to get to the underside is for the crystal, which is here. So this board, what's actually happening is this is the SCART input. So the audio is going to come in from the SCART from the console. Uh, I'm sure it's currently being fed into this chip because we're going to deal with these six points over here. What we need to do is actually use a knife, cut through the center of those six and sever the connection. And then with this board in place, it'll sit about there we'll solder those three points on. So what effectively happens is we have wires jumping from the audio pins of the SCART connector down into the board on those three solder pads. They get processed, um, magic happens on the board. Then the, then the digital audio goes into this chip and then it'll feed all its way out to the connector. So that's what we're achieving. There's obviously five volts and 3.3 volts, which we're gonna steal off this regulator up here. And then there's a clock signal which we need to get off the crystal, which will go down through that hole to the underside onto the pin. So I think that's all we need to do. Six wires, cut the center of this trace and put it all in. So that's the plan anyway. Now in preparation for all that, I'm going to cut my wires just to a long default length. I'm gonna solder them to the board first, just to make it easier to work with, not inside the unit. I'll do it externally. I'll put some Kapton tape on the board, uh, maybe underneath this board, just for something for it to sit on, just so it doesn't short anything. Although it looks pretty good. Um, I'll solder the three points, then we'll run our wires to the respective points and we should be done. Okay, so I've just cut my wires and I've soldered them to the board. I just use red for five volts, orange for 3.3, brown for clock, uh, green for left in, black for ground, and uh, like a pinky purple for right in. So this is the audio input, remember? Left, right, ground, five volts, 3.3, .3, and clock. So I ran them, you know, quite long and dangly, um, and we'll trim them to length uh, once it's in place.
Okay, so we'll do a quick test fit and see where our wires are going to run. These three just go to those pins up there, uh, six, four, and two. So I'll, I'm going to go ahead and cut them quite short um, and make them easy to solder because these are just ridiculous. Um, and we'll do the other three in a minute. But I guess what's I guess what the next step is, is to put some Kapton tape down on the board just to protect uh, any short circuits. So quick spray with isoprop just to allow the Kapton tape to stick really well. Obviously don't cover up the solder points we want to work with, but get close. Uh, I'll just do another one. This is not absolutely necessary, but I don't know, I find it a good practice to always protect boards with, you know, with Kapton just to stop any short circuits. Now I've just flipped it like that just so we can add some solder to the back of these scut pins. I'm just going to rest that up against my wire cutters and go ahead and tin these pins. So the ones we're looking at are the ones that are flat on the back of the connector, not the ones that come out at right angles. It's these back three. So just go ahead, heat them, add a little bit of solder, and they should be fine. Clean off your tip. Always keep your tip clean. That's a tip for you young players. Right, now what I'm thinking is we're gonna drop the board in sort of like this, sort of upside down, and then the, the wires will bend over. Have your wires cut and tinned up to the right sort of length and everything. And then... With a bit of finagling, you'll get that in place. That's it. And those nicely prepared, tinned up solder points on the SCAR connector just make it so easy to drop the wires on. You'll see what I'm aiming for here, like the wires will bend up. I'll go ahead, solder those three points into place. It's gonna need a bit of flux just to make that a little, little bit easier. And on the board, we'll need a bit of flux. And just try and solder them in place. Just get one done, and that'll hold the others in place. I'm just gonna load the soldering arm with a little bit of solder. Get that positioned. And hopefully that joined. Okay, so they're in place and you know the board's back in this orientation. So these three wires need to run up into here. We're gonna take five volts off the left uh, leftmost pin, and we're gonna take 3.3 volts off the rightmost pin. So we've got our digital multimeter on DC volts. Um, so we have to power it back on for a second. So just when you do this sort of thing, make sure there's no loose wires um, going to short anything out. Make sure it all boots up okay. Make sure there's no errors like that, like board ruined. How about you try and solder again? Censored. We're just gonna take grounds off, uh, you know, whatever, the casing of this, this connector here, that'll be fine. And very carefully, without shorting anything, we're gonna touch the leftmost pin and we get five volts. We're gonna to touch the center just to have a look. That's ground. And the right one will be 3.3. Okay, so we've just verified what we're doing. Um, I'd always recommend you do that sort of thing. Power it off, disconnect it. We're probably gonna route the wires around the, the top side here, something like that. You know, that sort of configuration. Um, so we'll, we'll cut them to length, we'll put a bend in them, we'll come in on the top like that for 5 volts. We'll, uh, you know, using the orange, we'll come in on the top for 3.3. Probably trim them about there and then bend them back. So I'll just trim these up and put them in place. Just adding a bit of flux before I attempt to solder down into that area. I might get rid of this pen actually. It is good, but... I think a small brush or something would be better. I'm gonna load up the pins with a little bit more solder and I'll put the wires in. 
Okay, so they're in, in that sort of configuration, and they're not going to cause any problems just running like that. So that's a job done. Now the next one is the crystal. So we've got to run our brown wire in this case down through one of these two large holes. I don't think it really matters which hole matters. I'll just pick the closest one. Feed that right through. Uh, leave a bit of slack and flip him over. Okay, and that's in place. Uh, I've already sprayed a bit of ISO on that. I'm just giving that area a quick clean up, but that's pretty much done. All right, we're probably ready for a test. So I might plug it into another TV or something and we'll give it, a give it a go. Okay, so we've got the little fella all plugged in and ready for testing. I'll put the base back on it just to, uh, I don't know, it's just a good idea, I think, to put the base back on for testing. Um, we've got a satin here ready to go. It's running a Phoebe, so we'll power that up. That yeah, sounds really good. We'll just kick off this game. Excuse the wobbles. So there you have it guys, works really well. It's quite a simple installation. Uh, the soldering of those three points down there was a little bit tricky, but it's, it's just small. So, you know, it's just a matter of getting used to working with things like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it all back together now. And there you have it. A functioning audio upgrade, passing audio out through HDMI. So if you've got a 1.5, like I've got, it's an absolute no-brainer to buy that board while they're still available. So be quick and perform the upgrade. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Bye.